Welcome to the Freelance Thrive. Here we're talking with skilled freelancers about their professional journey. Stay tuned for real life experience to learn and actionable steps to take to improve your freelancing career. My name is Yuri. I'm a community builder at Code Control and 90M.Works. And my guest is Thomas Kozaczynski, lead freelance product designer, design and business consultant, keynote speaker, mentor, and also he has been doing stand-up comedy for 18 years. So welcome, Tom. Hi, hi, Yuri. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm very excited to do this with you. Super happy to talk to you finally. And <laughs> how did you become a stand-up comedian? So this is a question I get asked a lot, and I've kind of distilled it to a couple of bullet points because it's not a grandiose story. I've always been the funny person in my class and since I was a kid. It was like a defense mechanism. If you're funny, <laughs> then people will not uh, fight you or whatever. Uh, but And girls like funny guys, I've been told. Uh, my, my wife did not marry me for my good looks. I must tell some good jokes. And uh, there was a first open mic comedy uh, thing going on ever in Zagreb, in Croatia, where I'm originally from. And a friend of mine and me, we were like, we can do stand-up comedy. We're funny guys. Let's see. And then we went out, we tried it and it was great. And unfortunately, the only bad thing about stand-up comedy, if you compare it to heroin, is that uh, <laughs> heroin, you can quit. Stand-up comedy is unfortunately forever. So I've been doing it ever since. How did you feel when you were standing for the first time before this open mic? Oh, it was so I'm completely blanked out. So I kind of did it on autopilot. There's very little memory of my actual first show. There was a lot of friends from college and it was I remember they were laughing and it was great, but it was very scary. Uh, and the first couple of years of stand up were not amazing. Nobody starts as an amazing stand-up comedian. So you kind of have to push through the pain of embarrassment for a couple of years and then get good and then it becomes better. Did you drink anything before? No. So, <laughs> so I try not to drink uh, alcohol in general when I'm performing or speaking or whatever because alcohol kind of dulls the mind and I like being sharp and quick to respond. So when, if you drink, you will lose that. You will feel that you're good. I did it a couple of times drunk. You feel that you're doing good, but you're not. So, so don't drink and perform ever. And do you learn uh, those jokes or do you read them from the paper? Like Oh, no, I don't read them from the paper. There's When you're performing for the first time, uh, I would have like little notes, just like if you're testing out new material, I would have a little piece of paper with notes. Like I want to talk about this. I want to talk about that, but it's just like a couple of short bullet points. It's not a whole thing. Uh, but then as you do it multiple times, you kind of polish the joke. And from there, you don't have to write it down anymore. The, it's just good to have a reminder. So if I look at my material, it's a lot of pages with just reminders. Oh, we're talking about this or talking about falling from a motorcycle. And then I know what it is and what are all my jokes around it. But I don't have to write down everything. I kind of know. It's uh, because I talk about things that I that happened to me that are true that I believe in. So I don't have to remember it. It's not something that I made up. What is your favorite joke? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> So there are a couple that I'm not, uh, I don't want to say publicly here where it's going to go online and then your show is going to get canceled because of my bullshit jokes. <laughs> uh, but but there are, there's one that I like that is a, because it's a true story uh, that I was, a friend of mine asked me like, would I ever be in a relationship with a blind girl? And I was like, of course, like, I don't care. Uh, it would be a positive thing because she can't see how ugly I am. So that's good. And, and then once uh, she was like, I would, I would have to mess with her because I'm a stand-up comedian. So if she would like to take a selfie, I would just kind of duck down and then like, Oh, how did you turn out? Oh, I'm look beautiful as a painting behind us because, and uh, it happened. So once there was a blind girl in my audience that wow. I didn't know, and she came in uh, after the show and introduced herself. And she said, like, I love the joke. It's so great that people uh, don't make me become, t t treat me as an invalid. It was, uh, I laughed so much. I just didn't uh, laugh at the last joke because I didn't see what the punchline was because she couldn't see the, the fun. So I explained. And then I tell the, that, that story on my next show uh, that she couldn't see the joke. That was a great experience where, where I met a person uh that were that really enjoyed the show and she didn't felt that i was attacking her and it was a great experience so that's one of my favorite encounters ever 
Did you meet people who told you that you were attacking them? Uh, yes, there was uh, a couple of times it happened where uh, I was performing in Croatia, and Croatia is very conservative Christian country at some parts. And I had a couple of Jesus jokes that people <laughs> didn't really like that uh, then they felt threatened. And then I said, well, yeah, freedom of speech and who gives a shit? So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it happened a couple of times. How humor helps you in everyday life? So um, I think it's when you are a funny person, it disarms your uh, person on the opposite side of you that you have a conversation with or potential client or whoever, because I think humor is a very great uh, tool to get to know people and kind of people feel relaxed because, okay, he's funny and then people relax. So it helps me in terms of like making connections in networking, in, in, my, in, in my work life and, and, and so on. And uh, it really is a tool that I've honed my entire life. Uh, I believe that people can learn to, nobody can learn to be funny. You have your own sense of humor that shaped you through your entire life, how you grew up, where you went to school, what movies and TV shows you looked at, what type of environment you are. So you can't learn my way of funny. Things that are funny to me will not necessarily be funny to you. But there are, uh, a, there are things that you can do to kind of hone that your internal sense of humor to put it up front and then use it to be free about it. So it helps me a lot in my, in my like, conversations and meeting people and networking did you ever have the situations when like you are almost getting into the fight but then humor helps to yes. avoid it <laughs> it happened when i was younger uh i know that i don't look like it now but uh when i was younger i was long hair uh leather jackets and, and all that shit and i still wear leather jackets but i'm not as threatening anymore but there were situations where we would find ourselves in where in like an altercation with another group of people and then he, i would start telling jokes and a couple of times we would just kind of ended up drinking together instead of fighting so so it did help especially growing up in eastern europe it's kind of it was the normal thing to kind of oh random bunch of people let's let's have a fight with them so yeah it did help yeah, you almost go into the fight and then you drink together. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly how it helps, you know. <laughs> and how humor helps you in your professional life? So the one of the things that, like, I'm not going to repeat myself what I just said earlier. So it works in, work, helps in communication. But what I started to do in when I'm consulting for a company, for example, I always show up very authentic and I never hide who I am as a person and being a comedian is one of the things that I do so I try to put that in to when I'm presenting something or when even if I'm doing research when I'm presenting findings I present it in a way that it's just not raw data like well we show here 35 percent increase of blah 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 who gives a shit about that but if you if you kind of present it in a way that it can show that people that they can show people that it's data but it's kind of funny I will make like funny comparisons and stuff like that so it kind of helps me to uh talk about whatever I did and also helps me perform because I have a lot of stage experience. I'm not afraid of audience. Some people will shit their pants because like, oh my God, the CEO is here or stakeholders or I'm pitching something to someone or whatever. For me, it doesn't make, doesn't matter, right? So in my professional life, it kind of helped me grow this like thick skin where I treat everybody as an audience. And for me personally, every audience member is a person that has never met me before and they will enjoy what I have to say. So if I kind of position myself that way, it usually turns out very positive. And except for communication, is there anything what being a stand-up comedian improved as a product designer in you? So if I talk from a product perspective, so if I'm talking as, a, if I put my product design hat on, there are... I'm going to compare it to user experience because as a comedian, I have to know my audience and I have to know what audience wants and what audience expects. And it's sort of a, I say that stand-up comedy is the fastest way to validate an idea because the joke is your idea. You get on stage, you say it, and you have immediate validation. Is it funny or not? So in the same way, when I work 
as a product designer, I use the same thing. I like to work very quickly. So what can I do to iterate quickly on an idea? So I, I use this term minimum lovable product where I use clickable prototypes instead of MVP and coded shit that doesn't work. And I test, out, test those out very quickly. And then again, being communicative and approachable, I can talk to people and see how they react to, to, to things that I've built. And what are three tips would you share with folks who've never been comedians? <laughs> okay, three. So number one would be to be yourself in terms of uh, whatever you feel funny. Just do that. Don't do puns. Puns are the lowest form. Don't do puns. But if you find something funny, don't feel that you cannot share that. So there's that's one thing. The other one is... If I'm talking from a work perspective, uh, there's a lot of uh, learnings a person can get from speaking in front of people, be it a presentation at work or doing like some lunch and learn thing or whatever. I would say like try it out because even if you're afraid of public speaking, I think that work environment where you know the people should be safe enough for you to do that, then this is where you will learn a lot about yourself like this is what i this is what i can talk about this is what i don't want to talk about this is like why am i scared of this why am i what am i afraid of so it's a great learning experience and then the third one people who never been comedians i would my tip would be don't try it because if you learn that you're good it's hard <laughs> coming back from that it's hard to stop so once you get a laugh from a full room of people it's a, it's a really heavy drug yeah, exactly how we've talked about the cocaine. Exactly. So, and what to do when people are not laughing at your jokes? Oh, uh, don't worry <laughs> about it. It's it's it happens. Uh, just how everybody has their own way of humor and what you think is funny. Some people will not react to that. Don't feel bad about it. Sometimes what I do is when somebody doesn't laugh, I acknowledge it. Oh, you didn't find it funny. Uh, well, it was funny for me because like if if you kind of don't don't feel bad about it, don't explain yourself. Like, oh, you didn't find it funny. Cool. I thought it's going to be hilarious. And just move past it. And then people are going to feel more relaxed because when there's like an awkward silence and you don't acknowledge it, then it just becomes awkward. And when you say like, oh, it's, it's awkward in here suddenly because I said this about Jesus. And then it's suddenly everybody's laughing, right? So just kind of acknowledge the situation be aware of it but don't be don't be dissuaded by it and just move on i totally feel it and you know it's hard to understand like to tell to people like oh okay i made a wrong joke oh okay so let's let's go through it exactly but nothing bad can happen from this like like what is the worst thing that can happen like oh people didn't laugh oh my god now like who cares uh you will like it's not gonna hurt you you're not gonna die of embarrassment uh you're going to wake up tomorrow, new day, new morning. You're going to have to take a shit, drink your coffee and move on. So it doesn't matter. You just like enjoy it. Unless you have a huge sense of guilt, you know. <laughs> then, okay. then see a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, Tom, I really wish to have the sky is the limit to our conversation, but time is the limit. So the final question is, what is your favorite food? Oh, pizza. It's a no-brainer. Pizza is the number one food for me. If I can eat anything for the rest of my life, I would just be pizza. Okay. Brother, <laughs> <laughs> I finally met you. Okay. <laughs> you know, Tom, thank you so much for sharing your experience. And it's been such a great pleasure to hear and learn from you. Thank you, Yuri, for inviting me. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, hit the like button or five stars and share it with your friend. That's it. We're done. See you in the next episode.